We are all prodigal in some ways, just as every character in this parable is prodigal in their own way. Now, of course, the term is linked to the younger son, but it fits everyone at times, including us. Prodigal is an odd word. Luke is the only one in Scripture who uses it. He uses it exactly once right here to describe the way that the younger son handles his inheritance, his sustenance, his might. In a distant country, he squanders his property in dissolute living, is how we heard it this morning. But the King James translation says he wasted his possessions with prodigal living, with a footnote that defines prodigal as wasteful. Prodigal means wasteful, extravagantly wasteful. And we are all prodigal. Now, it's clear that the younger brother is prodigal, wasting his inheritance, but all of the other characters are as well. The father is prodigal. What else would you call giving the younger son his entire inheritance, half of everything that the father has, half of the father's life is what the text literally says. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine cashing out half of all of your IRAs and your 401ks and your pensions and your life insurance and even half of the estimated value of everything you own and writing a big fat check and giving it to a teenager? It's actually kind of shocking, the request that the kid makes. He's essentially saying, Dad, you're already dead to me. Give me my inheritance. I'm cutting you out of my life. He's prodigal not just with money, but with his relationship as well, with that relationship. He's wasteful with relationships. But when the kid comes back, the dad throws this big blowout party, which is even more waste. I mean, I can see the elder brother's point, can't you? It is prodigal, it's extravagant, it's wasteful, and it is certainly not fair. We might see the older brother's point. We might even feel the sting and the juice of that righteous indignation. How dare they? But the old elder brother is prodigal as well tossing aside the relationship that he has with his brother and with his father, as the father points out, his reaction is, in its own way, wasteful. Does he go in to celebrate? Does he reconcile with his brother? We don't know. Jesus ends the parable here with this question hanging over it. Will the older brother squander these relationships with his father and with his brother? Will he remain prodigal, standing apart, wastefully withholding and rejecting these relationships? Or will he join the celebration? The brothers in the parable each highlight something true, that in the words of one scholar, we usually learn to demand our rights before we learn to value our relationships. We usually learn to demand our rights before we learn to value our relationships. And how often by demanding our rights, by insisting that we are right, do we squander our relationships? And what about the scribes and the Pharisees wasting their ire, heaping their indignation on tax collectors and sinners and on Jesus? 
Why are you wasting your time with these people? Why are you so prodigal with these people? To which the parable replies, why are you wasting your time being so upset about it? Why are you so prodigal with your grievances? We are all prodigal in our own ways, spending too much of ourselves, our sustenance, our might, our lives on sometimes the wrong things, on things that don't generate light or life or the love of God. We are prodigal in ignoring our problems. We are prodigal in being upset over things that we deem wrong, but that we really have no control over. We are prodigal in believing that we are indispensable. We are prodigal in trying to prove our value and our worth to others who may not actually care about us, often at the expense of the relationships with those who really do care about us. We are prodigal in the belief that in order for some to succeed, others, might fa others must fail. Prodigal in projecting our fears and anxieties out onto the world. Prodigal in chasing elusive dreams of perfection. You know all of the ways in which you are and have been prodigal, don't you? I certainly do. All of the characters in the parable are prodigal, but there is a difference, isn't there? The brothers and the scribes and the Pharisees are prodigal with their desires, with their fears, with their fixations, while the father is prodigal with his gifts, with his life, his essence, his very being. And there is a difference, isn't there? What would it mean for us to learn how to be more prodigal with our gifts and less prodigal with our fears? Gifts not only of material resources, but gifts like creativity, and wisdom, faith, joy, peace, kindness, love. What would it mean? What would it look like if we were more prodigal with those and less prodigal, less wasteful, less extravagant, less thoughtless with our fears, our resentments, our vanity, our stinginess, our need for control, our perfectionism, our envy, our pride, our greed. Maybe you're noticing a pattern here. I'm suggesting focusing on becoming less prodigal, less wasteful, less reflexive in throwing around things that have been historically listed as sins. Pride, sloth, envy, greed, etc. And more prodigal, more generous, generous even to the point of wastefulness with those things known as virtues or the gifts of the Spirit, patience, humility, kindness, justice, fortitude, wisdom, understanding, reverence, hope. Our fears and our gifts are all resources that we have, and we get to decide which ones we want to be prodigal with. I've left out one character, haven't I? Jesus. Is Jesus prodigal? <laughs> he is the most prodigal of them all. In the, po in the words of poet Mary Gordon, it is prodigal Jesus who, quote, multiplied the loaves and fishes so that there were baskets upon baskets left, who turned plain water into wine of a quality 
and quantity that no one required, who gave his life when he need only have lifted a finger. God is the most prodigal of all. God is the one who puts stunning alpine wildflowers far above timberline and riotously colored fish deep under the sea. God bedazzles the polar skies with stunning light shows and places massive ethereal nebulas in the far depths of space, completely unconcerned whether any of us are there to see or appreciate them or not. God is prodigal, like the father in the parable is prodigal, prodigal in spreading the gifts of God's very essence abundantly, extravagantly, everywhere. And the good news is that no matter how prodigal we have been with our fears and our fixations, no matter how far we have wandered, when we come to ourselves, when we desire to return to our true nature, then just like the Father, God is the one who is ever-present, who is ever-patient, who is always waiting, arms flung wide, to welcome us back Amen.